our next presenter is Maria Unger. She's basically just uh, around the corner. She's representing Austria, no, not Australia, Austria. <laughs> and she will give us some information about the research opportunities in this very beautiful country. Thank you, Suzanne. Uh, I'm very glad to be here again. I was here last year, last year also to, to give a presentation about Austria, not Australia, I'm not talking about kangaroos. Uh, <laughs> and I'm working for the OEID, which is the sister organization of the DAID, the big brother or big, sis big sister, wh whoever. Um, and I would like to, to give you an overview about the Austrian re research landscape in general. That means I'm talking about different organizations, different opportunities, different support uh, units. Uh, and finally, I also would like to mention one network which might be very interesting for you. It's the ASEAN um, European Academic University Network, uh, but that I will tell you more <coughs> about it at the end of my presentation. Yes, that tiny little country in the middle, the yellow one, that's Austria. Uh, it shows about one-sixth of the size of Thailand, so it's really tiny. There are only about 8.5 million Austrians. Our common language, or our official language, is German, and of course, also at Austrian universities or in research organizations, uh, it's sufficient to speak English. Uh, what does Austria offer. We, we have internationally oriented universities, 22 public universities, uh, but also practice oriented programs are offered. And Austria is a quite safe, or it's a safe country, and we are famous for our unique quality of life in Austria. For example, the capital, Vienna, you might not know it or have heard about it, um, is the city with the world's best quality of living. Uh, it was ranked on the first um, on the first rank in the Mercer uh, studies in uh, 2015. But of course, it's also rich in culture, and people are open for intercultural interactions. I I already mentioned 22 public universities, but there are also uh, research organizations about more or less than three. Uh, of them. So at research organizations, mainly applied sciences uh, or applied research is asked. We are spending a lot of money for, for research and development. About 3% of our gross domestic product is invested in, in research and development. Uh, compared to other countries, it's quite a lot. Uh, uh, high amount, it's about the same amount, than, than, or not the amount, it's the same rate, it's the same percentage than Germany does. Of course, since the country is small, it's, the total amount is, is much smaller, of course. And as uh, Mr. Dan and Andre this morning said, uh, we will give you one telephone number. I think that's really not, 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 uh, not uh, possible, but I can give you one email or no, one website, yeah, one website, which is youraccess.it. We are one of those uh, members in Europe. Uh, we provide information about um, our systems. Uh, we also do uh, or give personal assistance to researchers. Uh, and you can find all that information, what, what, um, what I'm talking about in my presentation, on the EURACCESS website, in, in, uh, of the ASEAN website, but also you can find it here on this EURACCESS.id site. For instance, I don't want to repeat everything, but you can find funding information, job opportunities, of course, legal issues concerning taxation, social security, language courses, of course, also uh, tips and information about schooling, kindergarten in, in Austria, and I would like also to mention that there is one guide, which is the Researcher's Guide to Austria, where all that information is, is uh, 
is stored and you can easily uh, download it as a PDF. Uh, in that network, mainly two, uh, two organizations are involved. It's the OEID and the FFG, but also all universities in Austria are members of the Eurexis network. So they are service centers and they give you that information you need. The other organization I, I would like to mention here is the FFG, it's the Austrian Research Promotion Agency, because that's the, the, uh, that's the organization you should contact if you are interested in applied research. They offer funding as well as um, supporting partnerships between universities, between large companies, between uh, SMEs, and they are also supporting internationalization. And in that, in that um, context, I would like to mention one program. It's the Beyond Europe program, because that uh, offers you the opportunity to, to collaborate with an Austrian company. Uh, and it supports you in doing some, some uh, closer cooperation for the future. So if you're interested in that, uh, you might have, or you should have heard about the program, or if you would like to go to Austria and you are thinking about getting a, a grant for an interview in Austria, then you could apply for the uh, career grant or a relocation grant or or the research promotion agency is also supporting dual career couples in Austria. The second organization I mentioned, the OEID, uh, we are primarily dealing with students and researchers. We are, we are uh, managing different uh, funding programs and we are also supporting, and, uh, yeah, supporting scholarship holders but also international uh, researchers in Austria. And we promote uh, uh, the general education uh, location Austria with different brochures and the website but also that might be interesting for you with a database with where all study programs are, uh, are uh, collected so if you are interested in a special topic for example go to that web website and you can find those organizations who are dealing with that subject The easiest way to find information about scholarships uh, would be to go to one place. It's the scholarship and uh, research grant database. It's, it's called grants.at. And there is all information stored about the different types. I don't want to go into detail, but you can select there your uh, research career stage, your country of origin, uh, your subject, and you get a list, a selected list of those programs who would be, who would be or which would be uh, suitable for you. Just one example out of that, uh, it's the Lise Meitner program. It's also co-funded by the uh, European Union. Uh, you could stay with that program as a postdoc in Austria for one to two years. And finally, I would like to mention one that network, uh, the ASEAN uh, European Academic University Network. It was founded in 1994, and it, it has or it have, has been the aim to initiate research activities and education partnerships between European and ASEAN uh, universities. About 80 partner universities are involved in the program about 20 from, a, uh, from, about, or from 20 member countries. And the focus areas are science and technology, economics and social sciences, health, pharmacy and medicine, but also humanities, culture and music. These are the partners in Thailand, the partner universities. About 
Also 18 un Austrian universities are invited in the program. And finally, I would like just to mention a couple of funding options within that network. So that's one of those is the Ernst Mach grant, uh, where graduates or postdocs can stay one to nine months in Austria, or PhD candidates uh, would be able to pursue a whole deep uh, PhD program in Austria. Or the second funding option is uh, the grants for postdocs funded by the ASEAN UNINET for one month. And in this context, I'm very happy uh, to introduce Batara Wadi. She, she attended the meeting last year here in, in Bangkok, and uh, I was able to convince her to, to do a, a research stay in Austria, and uh, I would like to invite you to tell a bit about your experience in Austria. Okay. Uh, still good morning for everyone. I am Pataravadi from Gesesad University. I will give just a short information and we can talk later at lunchtime maybe. Um, I actually met her and uh, participate in the activity of Eurexus and Sawatosho last year in another hotel close to Japia River because I was invited to give talk for former European students. I have been done my PhD in the Netherlands. And then I have inspiration to apply for the grant in Austria because they have a lot of grants that are interesting. And the people that they are nice, they can speak English very well and they also speak German. So, but I have family and I have my work as a lecturer so I can go only one month. But due to I prepare my research work very, I should say very well. So I did prepare and find a reference and I know what I want to do there. I contact the professor who's related in the same research area with uh, my professor at my PhD. So it's introduction, is the link, the connection between professor in Europe that give connection and sent me an email. So I contact first the professor and he said I should write proposal and see what I can do. The good thing there is they have a lot of nice, new, modern equipment that good for scientists. And we can do it really easy. When you sit in the lab, you can just take the glass, the wire, and everything. The next day, you can put your sample in the machine, and then you get the result. So everything was easy, simple, and the teamwork was really great. So one month, I actually success with my research. So first, when I go, I doubt that one month, what can I do? And the professor also told me, you can travel around here. <laughs> I introduced you the lab today, and one month is really short. If you would like to travel somewhere else, you can go. So he was actually really nice, but I said, I have my proposal, I have my plant sample, the natural products extract, and I actually have to write the report for uh, Asia Uninet scholarship when I come back. So I actually need to do the research there if he give me a chance so he asked me what I would like to use I said only high level of equipment <laughs> but then for one month it's good that research assistant will always with me because you know to learn and do by yourself sometimes you can make mistake or it's fall so it's really good short term I should say and good for the lecturer in the university. And it will be nice if I will have a chance to go there again because we talk about future research collaboration and this grant, Asia UNINET scholarship between Thai and Austria, I can invite the professor or researcher from master until the professor to Thailand one to three months. Yeah, so I think it's, it's really good. And if we can keep going on and I can go back there sometimes or bring my student or their student exchange together, we will have a really nice result, I think. So thank you very much.
Thank you, Bhattaravati. Yeah, and that brings me to the last slide, more or less. So, or the almost last one. Uh, there are also uh, funding available for both directions. So if Austrians want to go to Thailand, they, they get funded, but also Thais who wants to go to who want to go to, uh, to, uh, to Thailand. And maybe for your future, uh, a joint bi bilateral research project can be involved and that could be, or parts of that could be also get funded by the Asia Uninet uh, funding. So I'm really looking forward to welcoming you in, in Austria. And if you have some questions, just let me know. Thank you so much, Maria. Very interesting presentation. Any immediate questions from you? Yes. It's limited to one, that one, yeah. But for postdocs, it's also open up to nine months. So it depends if the Ernst Mark is open for Age limit. Uh, the age, the sorry, the, the, the duration. Um, not in that case, as far as I know, for the Ernst Mark, it is uh, 35. Any other question? Uh, there's one lady at the back. Oh, well, thank you so much. It's, it's not a question, but just a comment. Uh, just to let you know that I'm a former OEAD holder, ah. uh, and I'm so proud of you, so thank you so much. Um, and just to let you know how the mobility works, I, I'm from Nepal. I studied in Austria, spent a couple of months for research in Sweden, uh, now working in Bangkok, um, <laughs> <laughs> trying to work on common issues in ASEAN. So I think that is how the mobility works. And, and I think we should believe that there, these are the opportunities that we can actually access and make use of. Um, and I think the Euraxis is a perfect platform to, um, to actually look for more opportunities in the future. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. I think that was a, a great comment mm -hmm. for us to close for lunch. But before everybody gets up, I'd just like to uh, remind you of the great things that are coming up in the afternoon. In the afternoon, we will have a roundtable discussion with Thai researchers that have been on one of these research uh, trips in Europe. And I think this is a great opportunity for you to hear their stories, for you to ask them, how did you go about finding a partner? How did you go about making sure you were successful? So do make sure you come back. Of course, we also have more speakers from France, from the UK particularly the Newton Fund, which is a great tool for mobility for researchers here in Thailand. So with this, I, and the Netherlands, of course, Netherlands without, without uh, saying. So with this, I think we just break for a quick lunch and we're back here at 1.50, 15, 1 15. a quarter past one, one hour. Thank you very much.